to dream big and act. Ladies, are you dreaming big enough? I want you to dream big and act bigger. You see, I want to have power. I want to be empowered. Suddenly, being empowered is a more positive word because I want to make sure that I know my own values, my own values, my boundaries. I know what I want to achieve in life. Visible and invisible barriers only a problem if you accept them as such. So a woman with a big dream also needs to have a plan because without a plan, that dream is just a wish. I love her confidence, I love her charisma and, and her positivity and her brightness and her colour and her lessons about life, you know, as a woman who's been through so much. Uh, it was really, really inspiring and really interesting. I had four kids in two years. I wanted to be a businesswoman. I had no money. I had to think, how is this dream going to happen? If you actually start believing, if something's important to you, just back yourself. Back yourself despite what other people say. Successful people are not held back by what other people say. I would recommend that for everybody because everybody should have a dream and everybody should back themselves. So I think, I think she's awesome. Even when it feels like everything's not going to work, they go, you know what? I'm going to make sure that this does work. I'm going to be positive despite because it brings energy, it brings opportunity. And as soon as you actually get half glass empty, your vision will start failing. I encourage you to start making your dreams a reality in business and in life. Thank you. Welcome everyone just tuning in to our Mindset Magic Summit brought to you from Women's Biz Global. I'm so thrilled that you are here and I hope you've been enjoying our speakers so far. I love seeing your comments in the feed so please make sure you comment, like, love, ask a question of any of our presenters. Uh, we love to hear from you but we also love to connect 
with you. So also make sure you find your way around Women's Biz Global. Make sure you take your free trial of Women's Biz Tribe. Come on over and meet us on at the Women's Biz Tribe Facebook group. We would love to meet you and connect you globally. That's what it's all about. Uh, just really building your networks. Uh, and you also get to meet those amazing speakers that we have. And we have another gorgeous, gorgeous young speaker uh, next up. Her name is Amy Rose Kepler. She is a 19-year-old opera singer, a poet, an actress, and a dancer. She's got it all going. <laughs> she has been studying music from the age of five, and she's just completed a diploma of music majoring in classical performance at WAPA, which is the Western Australian Performing Arts uh, Group over here in Australia. She will be starting her Bachelor of Classical Voice in uh, uh, this year, 2023, and she's also been writing poetry for many years now, and I'm going to explore that with her and uh, and tap into yeah, pretty much what she loves about poetry and why why she's uh, what what she writes about and why she writes about that. So welcome to our summit, Amy Rose. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's such a delight to have you sharing with us and I would love you to share first of all yeah a little bit I've done your bio but but who do you see yourself as who is Amy Rose as an artist as a young emerging you have certainly across different areas so do you see yourself as a poet as an actress as a dancer or you just say I'm an I'm an artist um well yes I've been all around the theatre industry since I was very young. Um, I grew up as a full-time ballet dancer. I always loved writing, so I got into poetry um, also from quite a young age. And recently, um, I've been doing opera singing as well. So opera singing is probably my main career goal. Um, that's what I'm studying at university, and that's what I'd like to do when I'm older as a career. And uh, besides from that, my poetry is a very big deal to me as well, because I try to raise awareness for young girls and mental health specifically, as well as just the healing process from different results of trauma. And yeah, so a bit all rounded. <laughs> Very all-rounded. So, oh my goodness, I don't even know where to tap into first, the poetry or the aspirations. I think I'll talk aspirations first then. So you're 19. You've just, you know, you've done all the right things. You have been training since you were just a wee little five-year-old. You've done the qualifications. You're still extending on there. What are your aspirations? What's the, what is the dream? What's your nirvana of, oh my goodness, if, if I can... Um, become a classical ballerina or can I become a become a poet can I become um an actress what is what is the the dream for you if you had a perfect career if I had a perfect career uh, my end goal really is opera um mm -hmm. it is to get into a company um in Europe preferably there's a lot more opportunities in Europe than Australia, unfortunately, for the theatre industry, which is sad, but I guess most people go to Europe and then sometimes come back to Australia in the end. But I'd really love to go to Europe once I graduate and try and get into an opera company and perform there. Um, I work my way up to a soloist or something like that. And I'd love to keep my poetry on the side I'd love to publish eventually. Um, that's been a big goal of mine recently. And yeah, I just love to write and continue to share my story and help other people. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Well, the great news is I have a poetry book coming out this year. Uh, and so you can definitely be part of that. I just actually um, announced that only a couple of months ago uh, with um, just that, yeah, a, a poetry book for the divine feminine so we will definitely have some conversations there and get some of your poetry published uh in um, 2023 so that's exciting to start with all right so let's just stay on the opera at the moment then so you will 
go to your finish your qualifications you'll try and become an opera singer in europe uh what sort of you know opportunities for employment do they have then is that something that you can then do full time it's rec you know um there's enough work in europe as an opera singer that that can be your full-time gig you can go oh my gosh i can just keep doing that forever and have my poetry on the side or does as a as an uh, as an opera singer, do you sort of have to have other things happening as well? How does that work? Well, a bit of both. So when you're starting out, it's definitely you, you'll need a side job as well <laughs> uh, because you have to. Well, you, you don't get a job straight away. So you mainly do audition after audition after audition in pretty much every city. Um, Europe is very lucky because pretty much every country, every city in Europe has an opera company so mm. that's why everyone goes there so I'd audition all around probably starting with the young artist program because that's I guess it's a bit like an apprenticeship where you are introduced as a young artist you work in the company you get paid um, but it's more for learning experience as well so you don't have a full role in the company it's a it's a I, sometimes it's a year sometimes two years it's a long program where you get experience build um repertoire all of that and then sometimes if you're lucky there'll be a job at the end um but not for everyone so it's a continuous audition process and just doing performances as many as you can to get out there and it usually takes a number of years but obviously so you'd have to have a job on the side so that you mm. can pay for your lessons as well because yeah. usually when you're starting out you don't get paid enough to for it to be your only thing that you do so it's always good to have something on the side just to make sure that you're steady with an income yes. yeah um obviously because also with opera it goes different seasons so for a certain time you'll be paid and then in between if you don't have a show next or if you're trying to get a show next there'll be a period of time where you're not actually working so <laughs> you'll have to find something to do with your time in between that and continue your lessons yes. um but then when you're older usually you can do it as a full time so once you get into a company you can um work your way up and then it could become your full time. I've met a number of amazing people through WAPA because they have um, guest artists come through from different companies and they've in we've been able to interview them and talk to them about their process and what they've done all those years. So it's been amazing. So, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely looking forward to that. Oh, super exciting. So where did this love of opera come from? Was it in the family or you just suddenly just knew you had this skill and talent and desire and you, or you just love it? Um, well, to be honest, I actually started with ballet being my top choice for a career. I was doing singing, acting and ballet at the same time and ballet and singing were always neck and neck between which one I liked more. Um, I was always better at singing, but I really did like my ballet. Um, and my singing teacher was the one who actually got me into opera. I started with music theatre and all of that. And then when I got older, she started me on classical. And then we realised that I had a classical voice. Mm. And yeah, then I researched more operas and I got more into it and I I love researching things and like education and I'm I'm a very like scholarly kind of person so I took it as a big interest and researched and researched and I found that I was really comfortable in singing classical music and that's where I wanted to go in the end and yeah then I worked towards WAPA. WAPA was probably my biggest goal for so many years because oh, I yes. knew about it from the time I was like eight and decided this is where I want to go I don't know what for yet but this is where I want to end up and yeah now I'm there <laughs> and it's incredibly uh challenging uh and competitive to actually get to even into WAPA right so I know yeah. I'm in Sydney, we're the same with NIDA over here and those listening around the globe you'll all have you know those sort of 
landscape said it's so it's, it is so challenging it's such a big moment when you go this is all I want to do and this is the the school that I need to get into so first of all congratulations from for being able to do Thank that you. and and now be at the next stage of your journey what have you learned then about your mindset to be able to apply yourself to getting into these roles realizing that you can have rejection having now the unknown that you're now up to the next step so you pinch yourself and go oh my gosh I've got through what I thought was the biggest hurdle and now I have another one and then now I'm even looking at the dream uh, how yeah. does that affect your mindset and and what have you learned about yourself um, overcoming some of those sort of potential blocks yeah well this year I'm really lucky to say that I've actually had a really good year for career wise so everything's actually been lining up for me which has been great um, I was able to have my first operatic debut in the Gilbert and Sullivan Society's Grand Duke. And now I've also just learned that I've been nominated for um, the Breakthrough Award for the Finlay Awards, uh, which has been a massive deal and super exciting because it's thank you, because it was only, I think, uh, two days ago that I found out. So that was a great end to well great start to the new year so that's been amazing um but throughout the year it's really been okay so this is time that i need to put so much effort into continuing my learning process because um i did the diploma and the diploma was a really hands-on course it was great um, but we still had to audition for the bachelor um, at the end of the year, which was still quite challenging, especially because the borders opened up. So we have international students also available to come in again now that COVID's somewhat, mm. uh, we've gotten used to it <laughs> somewhat. Um, so this year has all been putting all my effort into continuing to study. So specifically like my music theory and my oral skills, because they're always the hardest ones to keep up. And also they are almost just as important as the singing part. Mm. Um, and yeah, I've done my, I've had exams along the way. And yes, yeah, so it's been just don't stop, just keep pushing, especially mm. we've had to start learning languages and stuff for classical um because that's a big part of opera singing you have to yeah. pretty much be able to sing in german italian french latin all of that so um yeah that's been a really interesting step because i honestly to i'm not that great at languages so i found that quite mm -hmm. hard but um yeah it's, it's been a great learning experience and it's yeah. just a also learning to not push yourself so much hmm. we've had to create practice schedules for ourselves and for the first time i um learned that there is such thing as too much practice yeah. <laughs> um because it can end up tiring out your voice um and getting to that point isn't actually as useful as just taking mm -hmm. a shorter amount of time and doing it well <laughs> that, so, so that's a very big really, learning. yeah yeah so it sounds like you're already very self-motivated highly driven this is your dream you're going to do everything it takes am i getting that right you're a very yes. very focused young woman and uh, and that is what it takes but also there's risk then of perfectionism uh burnout uh just putting way too much pressure on yourself or then also having balance for other parts of your life I, I mentioned oh you mentioned before too that you know your your poetry as a lot of that is also to bring out um you know a mental health perspective is that from your own journey is that a way of you releasing your thoughts and feelings uh what what uh leads you to just love poetry and what are you wanting to um come about from that yeah so with poetry it is majority based off my own journey um we had my family's had a lot of things um going on as we've grown up unfortunately we've had um now two pedophile cases um against our family which 
was a horrible thing to go through for it was my sisters and I and it was from a very young age as well we I think um we were maybe about 11 there's two young I have two younger sisters as well so it was from a young age and from that time I really used poetry as an outlet for my emotions because at that time I didn't know how to process it I um, our family was being told that there was nothing we could do and that we just have to live with it and I was very angry and filled with heaps of emotion that I didn't know how to control and I found that I, I've always loved poetry my mum's actually an English teacher so she brought me and my sisters up on heaps of literature so we've always loved books and poetry and we'd have little poetry sessions growing up um, and I found that I really loved writing poetry um, specifically free range um, but yeah I found that was a way that I could express my emotions and feelings and I when it happened I decided that I wanted to use my poetry to talk about difficult subjects like that that not many people actually talk about especially the trauma of it happening and then the growth and healing process as you get older after something like that happens and that's really been my main goal with my poetry is to raise awareness for mental health issues topics hard topics like that and nowadays it's mixed with um talking about mental health um a lot of it's self-love um and a lot of it is also just kind of who i am so music's a big part i love writing about music dance art um pretty much everything that makes up me as a person everything that i love um and yeah i kind of see it as just a window to who i am and yeah. i always find that i I can't I, I'm not great at saying what I feel to other people so but writing it down is a lot better so yeah it's mainly been about that oh, yeah it's an incredible release uh poetry and I love you said you go a bit more freestyle and I love that because so much of of life and their responses and the way to be a a, a scripted or formulaic or this is this is a framework, whereas, you know, raw poetry or, or, or you, you know, your diaries can, can have that opportunity to actually go, this is just me, this is just raw, this is, I don't even have, I haven't processed everything, I, I, I don't know what to do with these emotions yet, you know, like they can just yeah. all be a blend, but with that comes so much, uh, it's very cathartic, it's, it can be very healing, and as, as a victim myself um, of childhood mm -hmm. pedophilia, um, I, I totally, totally understand the whole, whole gamut of how how huge <laughs> this whole issue is and 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 such frustration and anger still immediately boils up in me when you say things like and everyone just says deal with it, go get on with it like just deal with it nothing happens um and I think you just said you had two so I don't know if it was two separate people or two separate yeah. Two separate cases. The likelihood of having two separate cases um, within one family um, situation, absolutely horrendous. My mama heart just goes, oh, oh my gosh, you know. But this is these are issues that we do need to public talk publicly talk about because mm -hmm. when we don't, there's an assumption it doesn't happen. Uh, when we don't get angry, it doesn't challenge that we need to do something more about this. We actually need to address these issues. And I'm so glad that you found your release through poetry um, because it certainly doesn't take the pain away, but it helps, it helps in the process. And so, um, yeah, I think that is amazing, and thank what a what a wonderful family you're, you're um, amidst. Then, with your your mum sort of encouraging you in that way as well. Mm -hmm. So, what does your so what sort of topics then do you does your poetry represent now? Is it just all all over, or do you have a, a have a niche sort of area that will come out as you know this is this is kind of your main area that you write on? Um. It's a little bit of everything, but I have like my main section. So I'll talk about 
like mental health and trauma. So some of it is quite dark, obviously, because it's coming from the still in that trauma situation, ha figuring out those um, feelings when you're that low, but then also the self healing process. So kind of just accepting that it's happened and that you're strong because of it. Mm. And although it shouldn't have happened, it has made you who you are. So you shouldn't, um, yeah, you, you, sh you shouldn't just use that against yourself. You should use that as like a driving force instead of yes. letting it keep you down. Mm. Um, and pretty much just different mindsets of how I've been through the years after it's happened. So yeah, you'll, you'll get just a wide variety of different feelings and especially the first you'll start off with quite dark then suddenly maybe you'll have some happy moments in the year where you feel like you're getting better. And then sometimes it'll go back to those dark feelings where, cause obviously trying to also explain to people that it's okay that, you're not going to just be bad for a while and then suddenly you're going to heal. It is still a back and forward process. So it'll be like moving two steps forward, one step back. Yes. Um, so, yeah, just kind of making sure people know that it is normal to that you can feel like you're healing suddenly and then feel like with a snap of the fingers that you're back there in yes. that spot. So, mm. yeah, it's it's all different things, really um but yeah <laughs> so what have you learned most about yourself you know when you've had serious challenges like this you found a release which is great you've also got your beautiful dancing and and now your your passion for opera and you've kept yourself pretty busy but what are the main sort of elements of you that you go oh my gosh you know I'm, I might only be 19 but I've really learned this about myself that I wouldn't have known if I didn't have to break through certain challenges not that we wish that on anyone uh, but what have you sort of surpri what surprised you that you're stronger in that you didn't think you would be um i'm not sure uh probably that at i've realized that i have a lot of anger but also fire so i hate that hate when people say that there's nothing they can do about those situations and then the people who are causing them get away with everything so i found that um i have a real big passion for speaking up even if i'm not supposed to um just to make sure that they don't actually get away with it in the end even if um the people who are supposed to help us say that there's nothing they can do and that they we have to just accept that they are going to get away with it and keep living their lives peacefully and we're just going to have to deal with everything else. I think that's quite wrong and hurtful and so I've really just learned that I there is there are a few things that I just cannot accept um, and I have to just raise my voice and hope that other people do as well and encourage them and just comfort them and I w with releasing my poetry I've had a lot of people um message me privately which has been really really nice um and we've just talked about how um some people a lot of a lot of young girls don't know that it's happened to this many people as well so they've Sometimes I've gotten messages where they say, oh, I didn't know it's happened to so many people as well. Thank you for sharing your story. I feel more confident to share my own now, stuff like that. So really just wanting to help other people and yeah, <laughs> mainly that. Yeah, and it does make you feel so much better when you get put in situations and you know the reality is everything can get challenged but it takes 
takes money, it takes evidence, it takes years and time and, and sometimes you sort of think is it, is it all worth it and it's very difficult to prove certain things and so it is a complex issue that we're talking about. Uh, saying mm -hmm. that, it still doesn't make it right and it, and it, and it is mm -hmm. very painful when you're the person, you know, seeing that people do get away with things and I love the way you've channeled that energy. While you can then just get, while that can then just destroy you and, and drive you crazy, you can also go, okay, well, I can't, you know, I can't do anything about that at this stage but I can create, you know, uh, an environment that my my voice and my message and my thoughts and my feelings can be shared, and that is incredibly uh, supportive and uh, and powerful for others who feel that they're alone uh, and that they don't have, yeah, they don't feel like anyone understands them or appreciates uh, that what they're going through. I also love what you shared there, which is so true that it is such a journey and. And it's it's not something that you suddenly just overcome. It's not like you've had a broken leg and you you know you have a cast for six weeks and you overcome. You know, real <laughs> traumas. You know, you can be looking fine and then something out of the blue can actually just trigger, um, a, you know, a relapse or a, or a you know getting getting down about things. And then um, you know it just it just takes time and. It, it does take a support crew. Uh, so, so now turning it, I, I love, I feel for you, it's to using your poetry as a real superpower to actually be able to channel that into um, opportunities to share um, your message and your, your voice uh, in a, um, a global environment. Now everything is because we're all online as well, but also to connect with others. Does that even come out through your stage presence and other things that you're doing? You know, this 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 confidence this confidence that you have because you've had to explore a lot of your you know your inner you know some of it might be very dark mm -hmm. and that can be channeled into your voice and your emotions as an artist i'm imagining it can be really channeled into um, making you a better performer in, in a kind of funny kind of way <laughs> yeah you're, you're definitely right especially with opera because of the diversity in different roles and taking on different songs so you have your really dramatic pieces you have your comedic pieces and everything in between um learning to be in touch with like the deepest parts of my feelings has really helped me as an actress um because i've been able to use the feelings that i've learned growing up and put them into my singing so that's really what you have to do as when you're doing opera or just anything um, when you're acting. It's always great to draw on real life experiences because then the feelings that you're bringing on are real and not faked. So those are that's usually how the best way to portray emotions when acting. Um, and yeah, it's just really, really helped me portray different characters and um, take on different songs and really put all my emotion into them yeah it's it's helped a lot love it love it love it so now here you are you're on the on the cusp of the next chapter you're going to get your new new qualifications which is so what course are you doing this year uh so i'm going to start the bachelor of music majoring in classical voice uh, at yeah. yeah the western australian academy of, yeah, yeah. So the classical voice is the opera. It's the opera ticket, really, to to Europe. And so, watch yeah. out, everybody. Um, Amy Rose is coming your way in just a, a year or two. I'm imagining. So let's just pray no more pandemics. You can be off. And away, <laughs> yes, fingers crossed. Uh, which must have your family sort of cheering you on to follow your dreams, but also like, ah, our daughter's whole mm -hmm. future and career is on the other side of the world, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, my mom. But, uh, my mum is very as it was was always a very hands on parent. So is my dad. So our family's always been incredibly close. So just the fact of moving anywhere away is just uh. yeah. I'm imagining those dinner times conversation going. Yeah, you follow your dream, but. Oh, no, that just means that you're going to be so far away. Uh, but yep. I know, as every parent um, does, that, you know, you want you want your kids to be flourishing and thriving, and, and sometimes that's, that's what it takes. So uh, we are all going to watch this space. Those of you listening 
in, uh, watching in on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn and wherever you're listening in watching us chat at this summit. Uh, definitely, if you've got any questions about anything that Amy Rose has shared, uh, definitely pop, pop it in the chat. You can always DM me if it's anything a bit sensitive. I can put you in touch with Amy Rose. And also you'll find her on TikTok and Instagram uh, with her title is Poetry by Amy Rose. So you'll find her there. Check out her stuff. Uh, check out her words uh, and hopefully uh, she'll come on board with Women's Biz Publishing and uh, get some of those poems into print uh, because definitely her words need to be um need to be read need to be um not just read but just taken into your soul and just you know percolated and let them resonate with you and 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 um and i love all of that around poetry so we wish you all the very best we look forward to sharing you with you at our future uh summits because um yeah i feel like you're just such a journey in um in progress uh exciting times ahead for you thanks very much thank you Hello and welcome. My name is Annie Gibbons, founder and CEO of Women's Biz Global. As a woman, a career executive and mum of five, I know that becoming successful in a modern day society, it can be extremely difficult and challenging. The requirements of career and business success are often overwhelming, especially when you have competing priorities like family. But that does not mean that you can't be extraordinary. At Women's Biz Global, our goal is to educate, motivate and elevate women so that they can have the freedom to live a life they love. It doesn't matter what your current status or position is. Your empowered future starts now. Whether you're a startup or a scale up or you're juggling business, life, career, family, everything, we will teach you how to dominate in your niche area without the stress and overwhelm that comes from wasting time and money and energy. We will equip you to achieve success, balance and happiness on your terms. We invite you to join Women's Biz Tribe. Start by attending Women's Biz events and enjoy the benefit of interacting with like-minded women from around the globe who are choosing to unapologetically play a bigger game. Women's Biz Coaching offers a variety of programs that may suit your needs. We have boot camps and webinars, online structured programs and incubators. They're all designed to help grow your personal and professional brand, confidence and support framework. Women's Biz Media will help you discover extraordinary women via our podcast, Memoirs of Successful Women and reach 12 million potential readers via Women's Biz Magazine. Women's Biz Publishing will take all the pain away from getting your voice and message out into the world. Your brand value will literally skyrocket overnight. And if you would prefer to access our consulting services, I will personally ensure high value solutions are provided to meet your specific needs, to time, to budget, and all with a beaming smile. Finally, get to know our affiliate partners and learn how you might like to become one yourself. Women's Biz Global is the support network that will fast track your journey to success. So what are you waiting for? Be unapologetically you. Women's Biz Global, helping women succeed in business and life.